There we go. I'm back from hell. <laughs> Good morning, old man Diabetes. Good morning, Domita. Good morning, Raddy. Good morning, Quexty. Good morning, Jimmy Map. Uh, hopefully the audio is fine. It looked a little scary there for a sec. And let me fix the chat window real quick. I forgot about that. Uh, welcome to level three butcher. Good evening, Paper Bag Let's Go channel. Quote ready. Ah, uh, where's the window? There we go. Back. Hmm. Web. Yeah. Anyways, by popular demand, it's not the Hollow Knight or the Neo soundtrack. Persona Three. If this gets me got on YouTube, like copyright wise, I'm gonna be pissed. I have no way of reviving Raddy. Uh, speaking of character death. Uh, things aren't going to go too hot this year, I'm going to be honest. Um, yeah, we TPK'd last, uh, last session against the level 3 Spidiculies of all things. Uh... can build okay now yeah we can make something new this year lol erect good boy drawing damon we did get lol erect i want to save these for like next year we'll see so <sighs> fucking level three butcher we really need a second beacon shield to, like, be competitive. I think we can get away with someone in Rawhide with extra sense. We've got one or two survivors like that. And someone else with the beacon shield, preferably in Rawhide, unfortunately. And those guys tanking. Ah, but then we don't have any- oh. Hmm. Which is fun. So yeah, we have to deal with Frenzied Berserker, so he draws a total of three AI cards every turn. That sucks. Fast target is interesting. At the start of his turn, he shuffles his hit location deck. So you never know exactly what's on top. It's kind of built into like counter stuff like Cat Eye Circlet. So you can't play slow with that. It does make him a little harder or easier depending on what's going on. Infectious Lunacy. If we take three brain damage over the course of the fight, we'll get frenzied. That's a problem because there's a card that <laughs> the Butcher just does like monster level brain damage to all survivors which means three brain damage which means you can just instantly get frenzied it's fucking stupid it's funny <laughs> now what that means is uh yeah we love brain damage around here we don't care too much about taking brain damage we have accepted darkness so it's a lot more difficult for survivors to die from brain damage but it can be annoying still. But getting frenzied means we are unable to spend survival, which is horrible. Uh, invincible, we'll talk about that last. Dreaded trophies, whenever a survivor dies, put the miniature on dreaded trophies and he gets buffed for each miniature on dreaded trophies. That sucks. Indomitable. All level 3 monsters have Indomitable, and some other ones like... Just like final boss monsters, pretty much. When the monster is knocked down, uh, it gets back up at the end of the next time it's like attacked or 
whatever. Basically, the monster barely stays knocked down. <laughs> uh, it's a little funny, because now there's a... Uh, in the gambler's chest, there's a status for survivors. You can be dominated, which is the exact opposite of indomitable. Where you, uh, you're knocked down and you cannot be unknocked down. Until the start of your next round or whatever. Whatever you'd normally get back up. And then invincible. Oh, he's got plus two accuracy, that's fun. It's really fun. But invincible. Seven, whenever he takes a wound, rolls a d10 and on a seven plus, eight plus, he just doesn't take that wound. Cool. <laughs> nice. You understand less of this game. That's because the monsters are getting more complicated. This guy's fucking rough, dude. Alright, so we're gonna take out a Whisker Harp. Don't normally take this because it's noisy, and we just have a 1% chance every time we roll on the hunt table for whoever's carrying this to just instantly die. Unavoidably. Because it's funny. We love noisy gear. Uh, how much toughness does he have? 15? Mm -hmm. Let's start crunching some numbers. The song sounds like Terraria. So we're gonna take our best survivors out. Ah. Uh, Probably rock the uh, this one. Let's see. You cleave it at plus seventeen. Okay. Hmm. Would Terraria be improved with dating mechanics? Maybe. Uh, only hitting on... Okay, yeah. No, we need some... Some sort of, like, actual weapon. Hmm. I think this gear grid's best, still. Now, only four or higher with the scrap sword. Interesting. Minus one speed. Speed. Uh, hmm. You have a girlfriend in Starbound. What? And good morning, sir, are you? Is that a normal Starbound thing, or is that like a, an ERP server thing? Al Quixotic, plus one strength token, so we'd be wounding on three or higher with the scrap sword. I don't know what. Yeah, we got huge accuracy. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to find the perfect piece of gear for corpse because she's got the high strength, and then the, we've got the one of those things, you know. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, we are not going to need pickaxes for this. We can free up some space like that. Left with Dead 2 ERP servers, I did not. And I don't really plan to. Dog that box when you misplay. No. Yeah, two bandages would be very nice. Don't need the scavenger kit. Hmm. Dog that barks. Arr. Scavenger kit would be really nice just to have, but like, this does nothing other than give us resources at the end of the fight. We're trying, like, desperately to actually make it to the end of the fight. 
here. These will help during the fight. And this. Uh, who else are we taking out? We could take Yuzuki. Yeah. Can I play this for the fight? <laughs> Probably not. What is it? <laughs> uh. Strange Journey boss battle. God, I fucking hope Atlas doesn't throw a hissy fit. I'm, I'm still mad <laughs> that, like, some of the VODs got straight up blocked from, like, the last campaign. It's like, put on sick ass anime music and I'm pissed. Uh, oh yeah, we're using these. This is bone slash hide. Yeah, sunstones and three bone. Or sunspot dark. There we go. When you hit, there's an inspiring flash. Survivors adjacent to the monster gain plus one survival. Dick as fuck. Did it get in memory hold? I don't think so. There we go. That's all the shopping we can do this year. Hmm. God damn it. Getting TPK is bullshit. Uh. It is music from the game. <laughs> Twitch doesn't know that. I still have our scrap lantern. We could. We could make a green charm. It was just if you die, just roll a d10 and the uh, 50% chance you just don't die. It's funny. I'm gonna mind Dr. Gun. And I should go mind Metal Deer? Probably not. Good morning. <laughs> X. But a cute girl. Damn. Yeah, I see why people don't play Dota. Naga Siren, but it's Splash Woman. Hey, wait a minute. Rib Blade is okay. It's only one speed. This is okay, but it's cumbersome. It's gonna be a problem. Scrap Lantern. Uh... Hmm. Yakumo's chilling. <laughs> I mean, we've got the Thunder Mauler. And he does have extra sense. We could go with that Yuzuki. Double dash. Extra sense should help. Playline Walker is funny. It's plus three evasion if you have no armor or anything like that. I think he could still have shields. We could try a crystal skin survivor. Hmm. Gyrocopter but sexy. Normal picture of Gyrocopter. So true. Uh emotionless would be actually like really annoying during this fight because on the off chance that you do get frenzied you want to get that plus one strength token because it's cool hmm yeah we're not doing we're not doing very well uh hmm Let's see. No. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, and that's like the exact wrong direction to activate Monster Tooth Necklace. Cool. Whatever. Uh. Shit. How are we gonna do this? Hmm.
We could go like... <laughs> and Sunspot Dites won't get activated. God damn it. Hmm. I don't have any... I mean... Use the Bone Club? Yeah, we're hitting on... Two or higher. And that can activate Monster Tooth Necklace. Throw in the Sunspot Dart. And now Corpse is using a lot of stuff per turn. Dashing and surging. Uh, hmm. Pulse Lantern's still gonna be useful. Even if we only get like one hit against a knockdown monster. Hmm. Yeah, fuck. Ah, uh, Scrap Lantern's nice. Uh, anyone could use this. Beacon shields go in in this gear grid. Mm. Whisker harp. Uh, yeah. Tank number one. Uh, mm. We want our survivor with the Dragon Slayer to be doing almost nothing but swinging with the Dragon Slayer. Ah, shit. What's our next grand weapon attempt going to be? Maybe Phil? Magachino has three strength that could help. Ooh. You're squishing him. <laughs> Get two survivors with Berserker. Whack. Yeah, three or higher with 2d10. That's perfect. <laughs> I think. I mean, yeah, no, that's that's correct, right? <clears throat> yeah, if we roll a, <laughs> if we roll a one on our main dice, we fail no matter what. So we have to roll a two, and then the lowest we can roll on the second dice, the sharpness dice, is a one. It's always wounding as often as possible. Eleven. It's uh, a ten percent failure rate. God, I, I didn't go through. I really should go through that previous vod and just see how many ones we got. The ten percent chance doesn't feel like a fucking ten percent chance. I'm pissed. Uh. So we can't surge and get the shadow walk sharpness benefit twice. So we may as well swap between. Shadow walking and blocking? That's like one survival per turn. That's like 10 rounds. That's fine. We could throw in a scrap lantern for an extra one survival. That's not gonna matter, but the extra accuracy with the Skleaver should matter. As long as we don't roll ones. I'm still pissed about that. <laughs> I'm getting angrier by the second. Uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. Maple Fool and Phil are identical practically. 
I need to check if survivors gained, like, during a hunter showdown get benefits from, like, birth principles and stuff. Because if not, Ivory State is uh, not doing too hot. We really gotta train up a shield master, though. feel great. Now this guy's left without much. Nope. No, 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 no. Alright, I guess Andy is our, uh... not having a good time, I can tell you that. We have someone without a shield? Oh yeah, corpse. Knuckle shield's just sitting there. False lantern. Crap sword is not necessary. would be nice. We really need the Wisdom Potion. You can see how bad the gear grids can get. Because we're having... We've got five pieces for the armor, one for the shield, which we really need at this point. And that leaves us with three for, like, other stuff. One of them's gotta be the weapon. And then we've got two after that. So only get two pieces of gear that have to help with our affinities and provide whatever utility we're actually looking for. This is pretty rough. <laughs> I hate video games. Uh, we can give Corpse the Flower Knight badge. Yeah, this is totally activated. We could go without the first aid kit. Uh, we might be fine. Ah, Nagachino's gonna end up being low on survival. God damn it. This is like the FTL Rockman theme. Uh, Lucky Charm does not matter. Only one spot in the deck has a crit. Hmm. Pacino. Oh yeah, post-traumatic stress is over. Hmm. An okay guy is doing nothing but blocking and not dying. I could probably give him the beacon shield. No, he only gets to block one attack per round. Do we drop the first aid kit for Flower Knight badge? Help him not die just a little bit. That nice plus one evasion. And then the corpse takes the pulse lantern. need a second beacon shield. Do we have someone that could replace Nogachino with more survival? Uluthrek is... he's got crystal skin. Hmm. 
Miss Sandwich Enjoy also has Crystal Skin. Maybe Phil. If that one point of strength ends up mattering, I'm gonna be super fucking pissed. Uh, Yakumawa's Coast. The Thunder Mall. <laughs> and two speed. And minus one accuracy. So we're going to get that perfect hit. It, like, breaks some limbs. Yeah. This is funny. On a perfect hit, the monster is knocked down, suffer a severe arm injury, and all non-death survivors suffer one brain damage. Knocking the monster down is nice. Severe arm injury is not nice. Yeah, we'll take Phil. There we go. I, I really hope Berserker comes in. <laughs> it's funny. Oh yeah, we are immune to Bash, so that might help. No. Oh. If we get Berserked. If we get frenzied, we can use Berserker on the- Oh no 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 no. <laughs> Never mind. If we're about to be frenzied, <laughs> then we can surge and activate this. Because while you're frenzied, you can't use fighting arts. Which includes exercise. Oh, we can't dodge anyways if we're frenzied. God, this is gonna be a shit show. Do we even want to try to knock him down? As opposed to being able to block several times during the course of the showdown? Yeah, okay, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't think Pulse Lantern's gonna be that important. I think we're good. I think? Okay. Let's get our ass beat. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we don't get the full hour of spreadsheeting because uh, we don't have any fucking endeavors because we TPK'd last settlement phase, uh, last hunt. I mean... We could get a Master Grease in, hold on. I'm thinking desperately about how to not die. Nah, we'll be fine. Probably. <sighs> Alright. So, everyone gets... What was it? Four survival, two insanity? Yeah. We love party wipes. <laughs> the, the max is 12. Two. Maxed out on survival. Another two insanity from Leather Mask. Cool. Uh, plus one accuracy from Sunspot Lantern. Even space in the act. It's also correctly Leather Armor set. One, two, three, four. One there, one there. Uh. I hope we're fine. Uh, twin sanity. We are insane. Chaotic. Plus one survival. Plus one strength token. You carry the weight of your settlement on your shoulders. Everyone is counting on you to save them, and you will rise to the challenge. We are actually counting on corpse to save us. <laughs> Don't fuck this up. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe we do want to swap shields. Oh, 
We'll probably have to tank an actual hit there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that probably adds up. Uh, map of four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Berserker. Genowark. Plus one accuracy. Oh, yeah. I oh, think we do the math, and that's more accuracy than we need. John Souls carrying the whole settlement. Gleaver, rating on three or higher. Yeah, we get an additional two. Yeah, that's too much, actually. We can't fit that into any other gear grid. <laughs> Even the raid corpse. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Good morning, Six Lord Davis. Good morning, Mario Rossi Penguin. Welcome to one of the hardest fights in the game. This is the one fight where we need to not roll ones. Yeah. Okay, good. It's eight plus. Yeah, the butcher's invincible. Excellent BGM. Blame Papado. For complaining at literally every opportunity. About it just being Hollow Knight and the uh, Neo soundtrack. Kingdom Paper Baxter. So true. Anyways, whenever we deal damage on an 8 plus, we just don't. <laughs> it's fucking sick. No filk. Side tube stuff. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, do we do a pulse lantern and then we do a first aid kit? Just a little insane. Yeah, go for it. This is the Persona 3 OST. But yeah, good morning, corpse. You better not roll any ones. You. Uh. One one? <laughs> uh. Damn, I didn't know it was possible. Hmm. Ah, I'll have to schedule that for next week. <laughs> uh, I didn't think it was possible yet. Surely I planned for this. Yeah, good morning, Hot Tungsten, and good morning, Marshmallow980. Daylight savings time isn't for another, like, week over here. Hmm. Uh, hmm. I would like to say the, uh, my original idea for it, but that would kind of ruin the surprise of the bit. Hmm. Okay. So there's a stream that you can skip next week. Huh. Okay. Live by the bit, die by the bit. Oh no, that's like the whole bit. <laughs> one one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Goonies watch along tomorrow. Uh. <clears throat> one one. Nah. You guys don't deserve that. <clears throat> He gave me the progress bar, I didn't expect it. <clears throat> Good morning, turret 49. <laughs> shuffle, shuffle. <laughs> it's the equivalent, yeah. <clears throat> Damn it, now I'm on the spot. Mint doing the truffle shuffle, you sick fuck. And good morning, Mimic Chest. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't 
the fuck does Crocky do it? Huh. Alright, yeah, time to refund the points. No. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, just like Ratty says it. <laughs> okay. Good job, Ratty. <laughs> uh... God damn it! Now I have to actually prepare the stream. What an iconic moment! That's fucked up. Maybe the pulse lantern will come in clutch. Let me double check Indomitable. Yeah. Okay. So I can at least end monster attacks with the Pulse Lantern. Okay. You were here. <laughs> Awful. Do the two insanity, I think. I am here. Let's see. Yeah, evasion tokens. They're only plus one evasion. Okay. Gain survival equal to number of blue affinities. Paper bag one one. You son of a one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. It only puts us up to 10? Oh shit. Uh... Hmm... I don't have a... We'll be fine. We'll end up berserking before the end of the fight. Sure. And Andy goes up to 12 on max, two there, on arrival, tactics card, evasion token. Link. Someone already redeemed it. That, honestly, no you can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not actually that sorry. All right. Anyways, it's over. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna suck. Maybe John Grand Weapon. I mean, we could train shield here. Hmm. We do want to get shield mastery by the end of the uh, the game. It'd be nice if we hit. <laughs> You're gonna live in a world with many more than that at this rate. Uh, do we try going grand here as well? It's funny. Nah. We'll get one shield wound in. And then, uh... Sure. Shield for now. We probably won't get the wound. But if... Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Bag and Karagi in the opening of Working. I love art. <laughs> uh, I was up rather late watching art videos. I really need to pay more attention to my posture. 
my main takeaway is that my back hurts. Uh, oh yeah, we got a tactics card. These are fun. The opening of working. What the fuck does it sound like? Uh... Sorry, you don't get to hear it? Because YouTube fucking sucks. It's a lot of wan wands. One 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 Avoid location dice are rolled, any stay in survivor who's adjacent to the monster and not being attacked may spend one survivor to cancel a hit. Oh shit, you might get it. <laughs> no fucking way. I never did watch Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. We're not gonna need these dice. <laughs> And now we are going to need him to, to roll for the Rawhide Armor set bonus. What else do we have? Yeah, just Prismatic. Oh yeah, I gotta bring the audio back. There you go. What? Uh, Alright, I'll put working down for the 1-1 one -one stream. You son of a bitch. There we go. Now I'm thinking of the raid Arsil Ardor. Wide smile. Being similar. Like a dragon. Good morning, Arsil Ardor. How much like a dragon were you during the Like a Dragon stream? Uh, a Skleaver. Sure, take this one. Okay. And then fill with the good the dragon slayer. I was left with that, it was good. I am breathing. Sure, take this one. Alright. Welcome to the Kingdom Death Monster. So here's the uh, here's the flavor text for the butcher. There once was a man who could not hide his fear. He wore a mask that transformed his cowardice to rage. In turn, the man transformed into a monster. All that remained was a devouring fury that stalked the night, collecting the fearful faces of others. Cool. Anyways, yeah, I hope, hope you had fun with the, uh, the dragon. It's just Japanese history. But uh, with Yakuza characters. So we got the stone columns there. A random terrain card. Which is in the middle. Survivors there. And the survivors are defending their home. They go first. We drew debris. Honestly, not good. Scrap sword will just remove something from our gear grid. Just throw that shit away. Adjacent to any board edge. Corpse has strategist. Add a giant stone face or a top a toppled pillar to the showdown board. I mean, we have one ranged weapon. Sunspot dart. Oh, and they give it the gift sub, six one powers. This is the start of your apology. <laughs> Alright. Alright, give me the giant stone face. Just in case it doesn't replenish like it should. Big pups. I don't 
don't like that. Uh, five spaces away from all board edges. Two, three, four, five. Probably here. Sure. Why am I fighting the level 3 Butcher? Nemesis monsters show up at certain years on the timeline. We have no choice but to fight a level 3 Butcher. Like, he shows up. We don't show up then. Uh... So yeah. Our alternative is send out four survivors that we don't mind dying, and then... The Butcher rampages through the settlement, everyone escapes into the darkness until it leaves, but all resources in the settlement storage are lost, repairing the destruction. Chances of death, pretty high. We lose all this, it's not that much, but we do need the silk and the dark water. And we're not going to be able to get more dark water with most limits, and we want these love juices. Yeah, eh. But, if we're lucky, we could get the Forsaker Mask. Oh, a lot of other stuff. Let's play Pinata. Good morning, Sherry Walkie. Welcome to hell. Alright. Survivors go first. 14 Nemesis. Now, the only Nemesis monster expansion that we're using is Sunderman. Who replaces the uh, the Kingsman, so he doesn't add more Nemesis encounters. So that's nice. All right, so I get to play with the top card of the hit location deck revealed. It's not the trap card. Okay, so that's a safe spot. Uh. I get the evasion token. God, I hope I didn't forget anything. <laughs> yeah, just to remember that we've got that extra dodge. Hmm. I'll prepare and explore. I'm not gonna do anything here. <laughs> there is a gloom fruit with the uh, the lonely tree. I don't know. Well, like, it's not a thing yet. Could get removed before Campaigns of Death comes out. Who knows? Anyways, we'll start off using Rawhide Headband to look at the top two AI cards. This will help a little bit. We gotta we gotta prune the deck. Uh here let's... I guess that helps a little. So here's the thing. The Butcher draws one card every turn as normal, and he's got this trait to draw an additional plus two cards. So he's drawing three cards per turn. So looking at the top two doesn't do too much for us. Actually, yeah, maybe we should wait a sec. We can have Mapofu dash into his blind spot. And get him. I'm not too worried about the reflex. We should be fine. Yeah, we'll take Map of Who's turn first. And good morning, Michael Hunt. Uh, looks fine on my end. Uh, it looks like I dropped some frames. All right. Michael Hunt's <laughs> sorry, Map of Fools A. Eh. Get to spend our movement, and we'll spend one survival to dash and use an additional movement. We want to use our survival quickly. Because uh infectious lunacy. Whenever you suffer brain damage, gain lunacy tokens equal to the damage suffered. And when you have three plus, remove them all and suffer the frenzy brain trauma. And while you're frenzied, you get a nice buff. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we actually can't make it to the blind spot. 
We should be fine. <laughs> They're shutting down Twitch. Yeah, probably. Should have started him over here, then he'd be able to make it. Whoops. Uh, we don't need the plus one strength that much. So we'll attempt to hit. A seven is a hit. We, yeah, we're hitting on four or higher. Oh yeah, we spent two movement. So we get two evasion for the rest of the uh, turn. So, Skleaver hits on five or higher. Then we get plus one accuracy for the Cycloid Scale Jacket. Just from completing the affinities and having them in a gear grid. And we draw the top card, Furious Shoulder. Reflexes happen after attempting to wound. We get to see the next card. Minus two toughness until the end of the round doesn't actually matter that much. But let's attempt to wound. And good night, Raddy. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bags bite. So a five is a wound. We're off to a better start than last time. I shouldn't have said that. So. Now. Let's put that there, I guess. The fucking butcher is invincible. <laughs> invincible. When he's wounded, her all d10. And as a result of 8+, plus, the wound fails. Alright. What the fuck is that trait? It's bullshit. The wound attempt fails. Either way, the butcher spins violently, smashing everything around it. Bash, knock back five. Don't die, Lamau. Exactly. Hmm. Bill can get in there, too. Whoops, can't. Not really. Bone Club. Uh, we'll take Phil in to see what's up. Yeah. We'll have to move. So yeah, we're taking his whole turn. Dash. They can get behind. I'll, I'll take the extra, like, the, the plus one. To hit. Now, yeah, while in the monster's blind spot, you get plus one accuracy. That's cool. So we'll hit on four or higher now. After a great start, I will surge. Gain an extra action, use it immediately. At the cost of one survival. That's a hit. We draw Butcher's Mask. Next card. Cleaver, it's fine. Probably not gonna attack again this round. And... I mean, it's sharp. So we do technically roll another d10, but like... Not. We're wounding on a 4 or higher on 2d10. And the 1 on the, the wound attempt is an automatic failure, so... There's like, one scenario. If we roll a 2 on... The wound attempt dice and a one on the sharpness dice, then we fail to wound. So anyways, we're succeeding unless the butcher decides to be invincible. He's not invincible. Let's fucking go. Dragon Slayer has devastating one. So we deal an ad additional wound. Very cool. Right again, getting thrown out of a casino for trying to use D20s at the craps table. Hey, wait a minute. Is that how that works? I hope that doesn't get me got for copyright. There's also reaction wound. The blow shocks the butcher, knocking it off balance. The butcher staggers, gaining minus two toughness until the end of the round. That's nice. The uh, thing is, the next card is impervious, and we don't really have anyone else capable of attacking. Hmm. So that's Phil's turn. 
Let's take an okay guy's turn. Now we'll activate the Rawhide Headband. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> but the idea that uh, there's just guys dedicated to doing nothing but making DK remixes is awesome. That's bullshit. Embrace the pain. Comes into play, draw an AI card. When the butcher is wounded, place one token on this card. At the start of each monster turn, if Embrace the Pain has two plus tokens, remove all tokens and perform basic action. So if you wound him, he gets an extra, like, attack that turn. Hugh, that's not that bad. Now, I did bring in Whisker Harp on purpose, because of things like that. Because you could just spend an action to have a 50% chance of removing a mood in play. Oh yeah, plus one survival on arrival. Mappa was not at max. There we go. <laughs> I forgot about that bit. So we can deal with this card. Item instrument noisy. Noisy is incredibly annoying. <laughs> like that's actually very relevant. Because there's one hunt event. Now we're taking this out on a nemesis encounter because there's no hunt, uh, hunt like phase for nemesis encounters. The which just shows up to your house. You don't have to go looking for him. There's a funny event called Harvester, in which a giant monster just shows up, and uh, if anyone has any noisy gear, they're just instantly killed. <laughs> it, it's. The rocks do, in fact, fall, and you do, in fact, die. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Heal, closest threat facing. Okay. Ah, oh, we would have loved Mappo to take that. Did I blow the heart flute? No, it's it's Lanthony at 23. He's on the schedule. And yeah, we'll move Andy right there. It's his turn. I guess we surge now to block. So we get to ignore one hit in the next attack. We do not get the survival back. Fuck you, Rawhide Armor. And then we can move Corpse here. And block. And then we can decide what to do next. Next round. Hmm. We can leave Mappo knocked down, that's fine. Uh, survivors that are knocked down are not considered threats. And next turn. Yeah. As ready requested. How bad could it be? We're letting them draw this so that we can uh, remove it with the heart float. So that's fine, because we're not able to really like get it out of the deck. So, embrace the pain, come to the play, draw an AI card. Butcher draws. Hugh. Closest threat facing. Otherwise, closest threat. We'll pick Andy. And... Well, the monster gets a chance to move and attack, get that flow point. That's when they're legally allowed to respond with survival actions. Now Andy can block. He's blocking one, so even if the monster hits with all three, because he's got plus two speed for being a level three, it's bullshit. We can dodge the other two with the extra sense. <laughs> but uh, 
before that happens, this is in play. He still has two more cards to draw for the turn. I want to surge to get the survival back. We don't. And we're going to use our hide headband to look at the next two AI cards so we can plan accordingly. Devour Lantern. <laughs> uh, target is doomed. Move an attack. Target loses their lantern. Gain minus three accuracy tokens. Lose all survival. This is the last remaining survivor. They die. Cool. And bite. Grind them severe head injury. I'd rather deal with the random severe head injury first. Hmm. Maybe? This doesn't doom us. That's bullshit still. What we're going to do is... Now that we know that the next two cards suck, we're going to surge with Phil. Oh yeah. Sorry, the hit location deck gets shuffled thanks to fast target. So, what that means is that you could draw the trap card at any time. You never know. Unless you're looking at the top card of the AI deck like we are for free. Oh, basic attack directly to the dome. On a failure, we'll be fine. Come on. That's a hit. We draw the Furious Van Braces. It's the next card. Furious Bellow. Okay. We'll probably be fine. So we have to roll four or higher on 2d10. That's not a failure. And now the Butcher gets to decide if he actually takes the damage. Fucking invincible. If he's invincible, then why can I still see him? Eat shit. I'm gonna take the L, as they say. I'm gonna actually spend a lifetime reroll on that. This is SMT Strange Journey boss battle. There we go, this guy needs to get these out of the fucking deck. There we go. Also taking a basic action with Headhunter. So I'll hit the head location. That, that, that would suck. Uh, this... Brain damage equal to monster's level and knock down. Oh, we got... Plenty of survivors with two... Sorry, three plus courage corpse. And oh, Andy doesn't actually have a weapon, really. Probably same composer, yeah. Hmm. We can surge with corpse right now during the monster's turn. Do we get it back? We do. And we can rawhide headband again. Now, worst case scenario, we'll have to dash in with Mapo Fu. We're taking this shit very seriously. This guy's an asshole. Hex City. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Closest threat facing. Or Hugh. We can tank a Hugh. Hank City is really funny. So he's got plus two speed, plus two damage, plus two accuracy. So he's rolling six speed. Depending on who's he, who he's attacking, uh, he'll be hitting on four or higher still. What's legendary lungs? Uh, it's sick as hell. <laughs> uh. The sensation of the butcher's attack is similar to drowning. Desperate for air, you gasp, uh, only to be met with a mouthful of steel. 
Even as the pounding in your chest intensifies, you recall the even rhythm of the monster's heaving chest. There's a chance you will learn something. It's sick as fuck. <laughs> uh, and you can get a secret fighting note. Uh, Legendary Lung is just really fun. There we go. Once per attack, for each successful roll, make an additional attack roll. Cool. <laughs> the thing is, we have to survive it. And he's dealing three damage each. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like difficult to get fun. Ah, uh, we'd love for that to target Mapo Fu, but well, we can actually make that happen. He would tug its closest threat facing as well. It's after this hue. Dodging one attack wouldn't... No, it's... I mean, we could dodge the entire first round of hits. This is this is some chess right here. Uh So we can spend the survival to dash with an okay guy. Here, three, four, five, move here. Do we get the survival back? We do. And we can spend the survival to encourage Mapo Fu to stand back up. Yoink. Do we get it back? We do. Nice. We're still being... We have been targeted for this. He's staring directly at Andy. Uh... Put him back like this. And... Back at the closest to it facing. I so say he's already targeting Andy, so he'll move and attack. Get block one. Do we want to take a hit from this? No, we don't, actually. Uh, before this, we can also dash with Mapo Fu and get an additional plus one evasion token. So, before he moves. Alright, so he's gonna move and attack. And then we'll get Hack City, and then we can choose Mapo Fu, who has the best chance of survival. I mean, eh, we can search later to block. It's fine. So, three speed. Uh, yoink. Andy has three evasion, the six plus, and he's got two accuracy, so four or higher on three dice, and it's five damage per hit. So that's two hits, one gets blocked, then we'll just spend a survival to dodge one of them. Feels like that. Hey, we get the survival back. Andy used four survival action. He's got a fifth in the chamber. <laughs> and has spent like one survival. That's awesome. So, no bleed, no bash. And. The Butcher draws his next AI card Hack City. Closest threat facing. Again. Two choices this time, equidistant, so we get to choose. We'll pick Mapo full. And six speed. He'll hit on eight, six or higher. Okay. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, it's after damage. Okay. That's fine. So we can dodge before the uh, the bullshit. It was six or higher, wasn't it? Oh yeah, uh, it's spend one survival to block one. <laughs> Oops. There we go. So block two with beacon shield. Wow. But if you spend movement, gain plus one evasion till your next act has saved us. Holy shit. So yeah, those two hits, they both get blocked by beacon shield. We fucking did it, boys. <laughs> Zero hits. <laughs> Just by being one fast motherfucker. And we get the legendary lungs. We'll read the full thing. And then my DJ ZMX. Just a little bit of SMT. I'm only going to play the song for the first Butcher turn, which is taking forever. The sensation of the Butcher's attack is similar to drowning. Desperately, you gasp for air, only to be met with a mouthful of steel. The monster's attacks rain down on you, each blow faster than the last. Despite the attack lasting only a moment, things seem to slow down. You feel numb and isolated, as if trapped in an endless body of water. There's no hope of escape, just the pressure from above on your gasping lungs. As the pounding air chest intensifies, you recall the even rhythm of the monster's heaving chest. There's a chance you will learn something. Roll to learn. Maybe it's baked, it's baby. <laughs> just, well, we get the 10 here. It seems crazy, but it makes perfect sense to you. The secret to the monster's attack is its amazing control over its breathing. Despite its anger, the rise and fall of its chest keeps a constant, steady rhythm. Even as the even at the height of its brutal fury. Gain the legendary long secret fighting art and plus three survival. Nice. Legendary lungs oh, sorry, Hex City is still in the deck though. It's not good. We got a little lucky there. There we go. So now we might accidentally draw the trap card with Mappo, but that's fine. <laughs> Legendary lung it out of the deck. Maybe. What's in the discard, so... It's fun. And now the monster draws Hue. Closest threat facing. Uh, I mean, Mappo has a dodge. And four evasion, uh, seven, uh, five or higher. Yeah, we'll target map of full. Three speed, five or higher, and five damage per hit. That's two hits. Okay, so we're going to take five damage to one location. I'm not going to be able to... Completely ignore it. Either the waist or the legs. I can win Renbato. Welcome to hell. <laughs> I think we'll take five damage to the waist. Spend one survival. Dodge the hit to the legs. You can only perform each survival action once per round. Uh, unless you're Andy, who can dodge one additional time. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Also, bleed and bash. Five bleed tokens is death. I'm oh, sorry, five damage to the waist. There we go. We've done four damage so far. Cool. Alright. There we go. <laughs> Back to the fun music. Uh, yeah, hopefully that isn't too loud. A little hard to tell. 
Uh, and now it's Corpse's time to shine with Furious Bellow on top of the deck. Oh yeah, fucking... One speed. God damn it. Why'd I pick... <laughs> Why'd I pick the fucking Bone Club? Uh... Oh, it should be getting quieter every once in a while. Oh yeah, I picked it for the affinities. God damn it. We did have to do it. Maybe Bone Dice would have been better. No, maybe. Here, yeah, we'll move. We'll spend one survival to dash. So gain an extra movement. And spend that movement and our action for the turn to activate the Bone Club, which has Cumbersome. Cool. In no way to activate it indirectly. One speed. We'll hit on three or higher. Okay, nice. Next hit location. That's annoying. Furious Bellow. We have three plus courage, so we're not worried. And we'll wound on two or higher. Yeah, the other bone club's fine. That would be a wound. Does the Butcher allow it? He's invincible, but we can still see him. Yoink. Alright. Uh, hmm. Yeah, bash, knockback five. Cool. That was Corpse's turn. Let's take Andy's turn. Well, look at the top card of the AI deck. Sorry, we'll spend it. <laughs> our action to look at the top two. It'll be fine. Gaze of Truth. Brain damage equals the monster's level. God damn it. And heck, it's fine. So this is a problem. Hmm. I don't want anyone to get frenzied just yet. And this is the exact case where we have one of our berserkers activate the berserker. Frenzy themselves. And then take the frenzy there. We wouldn't be able to use legendary lungs while frenzied either, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, so that would leave Phil to be our main target. Closest threat facing. It's a bit annoying. And that's a reflex too. Zone of death is not adjacent, it's just everyone. Then one square. Hmm. Here. Yeah. Corpse can encourage Mapo Fu. Do we get the survival back? We do. Yeah, the, the audio ducking might be a little too aggressive. I am not an audio engineer. Whoops. Okay, so yeah, Mapo Fu can stand back up. We can take... Oh yeah, Andy's going to... He's gonna move back here, actually. He doesn't have an action for the turn. Okay. <laughs> That's just what Persona sounds like. God damn it. You're not wrong. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's Andy's turn. If I take Mappo's turn, loses all those plus one evasion bonuses. He's gonna move still. We do have bandages on two survivors. One, two, three, four, five. He's allowed to walk through other survivors thanks to... Yeah, the scale jacket. Shadow walk. Move through spaces survivors occupy without causing collision. Very cool. We attack from the blind spot for plus one accuracy and sharp. Sharp shouldn't matter. And that's a hit. Not a perfect hit, but a hit. If we get a 
10. That's a perfect hit on our attack roll. And then it gets devastating until the end of the attack with the Skleaver, which is really nice. <laughs> Someday we'll roll a 10. Oh yeah, this doesn't even have slow. Oh, that's a hit. We get a roll again. That is actually a hit, because we're in the blind spot, we get plus one accuracy and cyclid scale sleeves. Whenever you shadow walk and attack a monster from its blind spot, your weapon gains plus one accuracy and sharp for that attack. So we can see what the next one is. It's fine. Got it. Next one. Got the trap card. The mask is fine. Okay. So we'll choose to wound the Furious Greaves first. Uh, again, if the blue dice rolls a one, that sucks. Sure, eight, whatever. Reflex, full move towards the attacker. That's fine. And not an eight plus. He decided to take damage. Thanks. I don't want to deal with Gaze of Truth. Fuck that shit. <laughs> All right. Yoink. Full move. I. I I think that does entail turning to face. It should. I don't know. <laughs> Any rules lawyers can fight me. Furious shoulder. A reflex, you'll knock down everyone. Let's see if we wound first. Hey, a 10. That would be a crit if there was a uh, any sort of a crit spot on this. So it's just cool. And he decided not to take the hit. Damn. So, he spins all survivors in the zone of death. Suffer, bash, knock back five. Doink. Bash, bash. Not in the zone of death. Knock back five. Leather armor, ignore bash. Yoink. And that's Mappo's turn. And Phil can, I don't know, walk up and knuckle shield. We got Hack coming in. We don't know the other cards. That sucks. No one else can, like, surge and figure that shit out. Whoops can actually stand back up, thanks to Fist and Tooth specialization. Uh, so that'll be fun. We might want to just go, like, here. <laughs> and, uh... Spend our action to block. With the knuckle shield. Cool. Uh, yeah, we really- we burnt through our survival actions. Sorry, that's the invincible dice. All right, what's your turn? How bad could this be? All right. So the monster draws hack. Targets. Oh god, I forgot about. Oh fuck. Shit, I forgot about. <laughs> Embrace the pain. I mean, I guess... Yeah, I forgot. Cool. <laughs> we did wound the Butcher twice. So we... Hey, damn it. Fuck. Uh... Andy didn't have the extra actions to Whisker Harp in the meantime. We'll just fucking deal with it. Closest survivor in field of view... Would it actually be Andy. God damn it. <laughs> Shit. Alright, so he gets targeted by the butcher's basic action. Cool. We can get we can dash into range. Uh Ooh. 
will encourage with Andy? There we go, we do get the survival back. We can have Corpse stand back up. You can then surge. Dunk. We get it back? No. And activate Rawhide Headband. Look at the top two AI cards. Is that what I wanted to do? No, not yet. I do want to do it though. Yeah, sure. We'll do it now. Fucked up a little bit. Lantern Frenzy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, shit. This is fun. When it comes into play, random survivor gains the priority target token. It cannot be removed for any reason. Draw an AI card, so he's not missing tempo. While Lantern Frenzy is in play, the Butcher gains plus two movement, plus one speed token. Anytime the survivor with the priority target token may sacrifice themselves and lead the Butcher far away. They perish, their gear is archived. End the showdown immediately. Skip the aftermath. Discard Lantern Frenzy if the survivor with the priority target token is killed. Well, that's a great incentive to, uh, to go spend two survival, surge, and dash with Phil. Try to smack this dude. Hmm. Whoops, can also try... That's a hit. Yeah, five or higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can win Harry Monkey Man. Welcome to one of the more stressful fights. So we should be fine. Oh yeah, start of the turn. Hold on. God damn it. Fast target. God, look at the art on this. Shuffle the hit location deck. And then we get to see what the top card is. Furious Vambraces. God damn it. That's a little rough. I'll still go for it. We'll be fine. Furious Shoulder, this bullshit. So. There's our sharpness dice. <laughs> Let's see. Did we get them? Fuck. One failure. Hmm. We did block with the knuckle shield, so that's nice. We're taking basic attack to the head. Yeah, it's four speed. It'll hit on three or higher. And we can't dodge because... We are attacking. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, it's four hits. Oh, is that three? Yeah, it's three or higher. God damn it. <laughs> uh, fuck, dude. Curse of the Dragon Slayer Survivor. Oh yeah, these all go to the head. So, three hits, three damage to the head. That's less than good. <sighs> God damn it! <laughs> so we take three damage. Three. We take three damage and then a severe injury. Noink. And then we take another severe injury to the head. And we don't have any rerolls left. That... Uh, yeah... Cool. Five. 
Oh, intercranial hemorrhage. You can no longer use or gain any survival. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleeding token. Oh, intracranial. Cool. Nice. So we're going to berserk at our next uh, convenience. If we survive the next hit. It's motherfucker. Oh. So we already have that, so we just gain one bleeding token. <sighs> we survived. Oh, sorry. Wrong box. There we go. And then... I was doing brain damage. <sighs> At least he's knocked down. So I don't get targeted by most stuff. Uh... Well, that's that. This guy sucks. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, then we have a basic action going directly towards Andy. Let me double check the glossary. The rules on monster knockdown. Yeah, attack rolls out on 3+, plus, cancel all reactions. Including reactions might be beneficial to survivors, etc., etc. Not knock down during the flow, cancel any remaining actions on its card. Stands when it draws an AI card. Okay, so it'll only cancel that one card. Shit. He still hasn't drawn a card. Corpse can encourage Mapo Fool to do <laughs> nothing really. Nothing yet. I don't know, we'll just do that in case right now. I'm scared. Don't get the survival back. I mean, we could surge with the corpse to attack. No, we can't. We already surged. Fuck. Mapo can't actually get in the melee range because Phil's just sitting there. Can you go one, two, three, four, five? That might help. Hopefully, he gets knocked down. Dash. One, two, three, four, five. I'm stamped. Uh-oh. Andy didn't block last turn. Really want him to whisker heart this away. Only done six damage out of like twenty-one. B. Oh god, I forgot about diversion tactics. <sighs> Corpse can dash. Yoink. I should get it back. Yeah. Nice. It is now adjacent. Which, uh, actually takes his action, finally. Basic attacks. Andy. That's uh, four speed. No, I'm gonna win. Here with Ola? Yeah. Can you ask a favor? What is the favor? How bad could it be? Andy's not blocking. Oh, 
I'll save it. We'll be fine. Hopefully we can take four to the head. Alright, buddy. Good luck. Been here for two hours. Oh. Shit, I am insane. The one Fontaine is dead? Nah, I think I got that one right. So three, one evasion. You'll hit on five or higher. Two hits. Can I move Pixel to Wednesday slash Friday? Maybe. I mean, I guess. We can dodge one hit. We get it back. We do. Oh, sorry, where are the hits going? Waste and body. Or... How much damage each? Three. You're working. Maybe. What monster? The Butcher. He's cool as hell. We'll spend one survival with corpse for diversion tactics. I cancel one of the hits. Oh, before hit location dice are rolled. Oh, I'll do that beforehand. <laughs> sure. There's no scenario where you want to take two hits. I don't want a severe injury, I just want a heavy injury. Okay. I should have read the card beforehand. We'll be fine. And now he draws his first card for the turn. Closest threat facing. Hmm. Yeah, we'll target Andy and we'll block. We don't get the survival back. Uh, he's, he just looks so cool. Again, three or higher. Well, yeah, closest to facing. Five or higher. Or speed. <sighs> oh, fuck. Good thing we blocked. So that's four hits. We'll spend one survival with corpse. And make that three hits. So he's taking three damage and one bleed to, I, I guess, the body. Oh yeah, block. Ignore one. Dodge. We get it back. No. No, another one. Two, three. And bleed token. Afford the physical. I mean, you can just play on tabletop sim. Unfortunately for uh, everyone else involved. It works pretty well. Depresso. Yeah, that's an Esper. <laughs> they're, they're really like the masters of legally distinct Pokemon. And nice lantern frenzy. Cool. Random survivor gets the priority target token permanently. Andy. Oh, fuck. <sighs> uh oh. Alright. Second card for the turn. Hack. Target Andy. Five or higher. Alright, 
Corpse can remove one of those. So he takes three damage to the dongle chest, the leg, and gets a bleed token. Oh, sorry, he has what, plus one speed? Plus two speed? Plus two movement, plus one speed. Okay. Cool. Nice. So one more dice. Oh, thank fuck, that's not a hit. Alright, next card. Forbidden Light. Motherfucker. This son of a bitch. When this comes into play, draw an AI card. When the survivor ends their act in the light radius, they gain minus one strength token. At the end of each monster turn, place a token on Forbidden Light. First five plus tokens discarded, and all minus one strength tokens gained from Forbidden Light. Cool. You can see why I brought the Whisker Heart. Wild Carve. Any survivors adjacent suffer damage to random location, bleed token. I'll try to knock him down. Yeah, we'll spend on survival, surge with Mapo, activate Pulse Lantern, roll d10 on a 4+, plus, the monster's knocked down, and all survivors gain minus 1 accuracy token. Alright, knocked down, cancels the attack. The Sidui Gardevoir. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Looks like Marvin the Martian. God, they really are legally distinct Pokemon. Item, Lantern, Foreskin, Fragile. Wait, hold on. Uh, double check Cadium. Indomitable. And... Full Slanton. Nah, it's Gorm skin. Come on. That's normal. Hmm. Is that. Do we have the rules answered ready on Google? Double check one more. And Whoa. Hmm. Eh. Not gonna get an answer. So cancel any remaining actions on the card. I guess he's not attacking. I don't know. How does that work? Just attacks or is attacked that stands up at the end of that attack? If a survivor attacks during another survivor's attack, the knockdown monster will stand at the end of the new attack. <laughs> it looks like a game. It doesn't look like a good game still, I don't think. Uh, actually, no, you're... Yeah, fuck. Yeah, regardless, we don't have any way of uh, doing anything to the gorm uh, to the butcher. He's uh, he'll get back up at the start of the survivor turn. The slave commander Pokemon, yeah, this <laughs> Craftopia Scarlet Violet. You're not wrong.
Yeah, he still gets up. Attack is Gorm. He's Gormless. I'm sorry. Uh, Phil does not get up naturally. He's not frenzied. We can frenzy him as a treat. Probably run better. You're not wrong. We can deal with a little bit of Forbidden Light. Two. Six, six, six. Oh my god, we're dead. That. Uh. I haven't wounded him since the last turn, so no tokens on Embrace the Pain. Alright, Andy gets to go first and activate his patented Whisker Harp. Uh, we want the discard Lantern Frenzy. Alright, Andy. You just have to roll six plus. There we go. There hasn't been a good 3D Pokemon game. Does black and white count as 3D? Rolling Andy. He did it. I guess he still has the priority target token. It doesn't remove it. Let you remove it still? Hold on. <laughs> uh, how do the rules on that work? Huh. But yeah, I thought, yeah, like Gen 5 is like the last good one. Oh, yeah, Pokemon Snap. Yeah, XD and Coliseum were good. Okay, I guess the Pokemon Snap should count. Here, yeah, we can actually walk Andy away from the Butcher. And the next time he targets Andy, we can dash him just out of range. And then the Butcher won't be able to reach. Priority token will, Priority target token will get removed and... Uh, Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. How's that go? Uh. Mapo can... Encourage? Dash into range? We block. <clears throat> There's never been a good Pokemon game. There, I said it. <laughs> uh, no, nah, he's gonna be right there. That was Andy's turn. Alright, we'll take Corpse's turn and then we'll decide what to do from here. We'll activate Rawhide Headband. Fuck, dude. Screaming! No. Yeah, this is the bullshit one. <laughs> when screaming comes into play, all non-death survivors suffer one brain damage per monster level. At the start of the Butcher's turn, all non-death survivors suffer one brain damage per monster level. Discard screaming if a survivor dies. He's level 3. Frenzy requires three lunacy tokens on infectious lunacy. That's not good for us. Yeah, I gotta put that token on this, I forgot. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back, and I'll have some more coffee, too. <laughs> Scramming. Don't give it up, Luffy. I'll be back in just a sec.
There we go. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, the Pokemon games are all right. Yeah, Screaming is the funny card that you can draw turn one and then just get frenzied every single turn. Wild Carve. Hmm. Probably just have to deal with that. Ah, uh, how are we gonna take care of this? Attack from the blind spot with Phil? I don't think I'll stream the new Pokemon game. <laughs> We're gonna have to encourage with Mapofu. Phil stands back up. Like, I don't feel the need to play the DLC. At all. Yo, I'll take Phil's turn now. And we just need to deal one damage. Oh, brick up. So true. Uh, we'll take Corpse's turn first, actually, and block. And then move back. Wait, no, use Corpse's action to look at the top cards. We'll just move back. Damn it. Alright. Bill, Dragon Slayer. That's a miss. Yeah. Napo foo. Healing. I guess we can, yeah, end of the act, we can move Phil one space. Don't really need to that one. But we can dash with Napo foo. Healing. It's a blind spot. The motorcycle Pokemon. Not oh, that bad. Come on. And Skleaver. We do have legendary lungs to worry about. We'll hit on anything but a one. No. Tabletop Sim says it's a one. Fuck. Real bad. <laughs> this is real bad. <laughs> oh fuck, dude. <laughs> oh. Okay. The fight just gets funny now. No more rerolls. <laughs> At least screaming doesn't. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, damn, dude. Oh yeah, I guess minus one strength tokens from Forbidden Light. Good luck. We're gonna need it. Uh... We can no longer dodge. Then survival in any way, shape, or form. Because the monster draws screaming. When screaming comes into play, all non-death survivors suffer one brain damage per monster level. At the start of the butcher's turn, all non-death survivors suffer one brain damage per monster level. This card's screaming if a survivor dies. Alright. One, two, three. They get three tokens on Infectious Lunacy. So we suffer three brain damage. When you have three plus, remove them all. Frenzy. Can we right And three. Two, three. One, two, three. Oh, yeah.
Top card is super dense. Hey, that's good. Hold on. Okay. So, Frenzy, gain 1d5 insanity. Plus one speed token, plus one strength token. Ignore slow on melee weapons. You may not spend survival, you may not use fighting arts, you may not use weapon specialization or weapon mastery. Can be gained multiple times, lasts until the end of the showdown. Good morning, brace for haste. So our main worry is... The fact that we could draw too many cards with the, a Dragon Slayer Survivor, draw the, the super dense location, and get this fucking obliterated. I have two evasion tokens. Cool. <sighs> so now things are gonna be funny. Alright. I would like to get rid of Embrace the Pain with uh, Andy as soon as possible. If he survives this attack, Wild Carve. There we go. Forbidden Light's annoying. Okay. How many monsters? Uh, there's a few. I'm gonna exclude the, uh, the homebrew ones. One, two, three... Sorry. One, two, three, four... Five, six... Seven... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 with expansions. Uh, well that's, okay, yeah, there were like three quarry monsters. The, uh, the White Lion, the Screaming Antelope, and the Phoenix. Maybe we got the Butcher, the Kingsman, the Hand as Nemesis monsters, and then there's like the Watcher as like the first final boss, and then the Gold Smoke Knight as the second final boss. Alright, more speed. You'll hit on. <laughs> Andy. Five or higher. Ah, oh, fuck! That's four hits. And he's fucking dead, dude. <laughs> oh, it's no way. <laughs> Shit. Dude's fucking dead. We'd be able to at least dodge some of those, uh, but no. <laughs> uh, all right. It's three damage each. One, two, three. So it takes one severe injury to the body. He could roll like three pens. Six disembowelment. One bleed token, seven ruptured spleens, two bleed. He's dead. <laughs> uh, fuck. Rip. Yeah, he would have been able to block, dodge twice, and then corpse would have been able to, uh, to get him. And spend one survival, block another hit. You can see why, uh, why I was f fucking losing it at drawing this card. Extremely disappointed. Oh fuck, Phil can't even get into melee range. A piece of shit. Fuck. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I wanna hit the Dragon Slayer. It's like the one thing that could save this. 
I'm a pick shoulder. Uh, cool. All attack profiles gain after damage. Bleed one. Wild carve just happened. Oh yeah. Also, I have a situation to the monster. Suffer one damage to a random hit location and gain one bleeding token. Cool. Oh yeah, we could have just like dashed to get out of the way of that toe. Alright, one damage to the... Oh. Body. And a bleed token. Phil still has... Okay, yeah, Phil can use bandages on his turn. He's frenzied, so he can't use Berserker. Yeah, let's remove these. No survival actions. Oh yeah, Screaming does get discarded because the survivor died. Bite. Closest threat facing. Corpse. <laughs> Fucking hell. Eat shit. <laughs> uh... That's one per hit, right? Cool. Let's see. Let me double check real quick. Looked up the rules. Uh, should be explained in the after hit. Uh, H71, apparently. Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. There are any successful hits in this attack before rolling hit location dice apply this trigger's attack effects. That uh, doesn't say one per each. Hmm. <laughs> cool. Alright, corpse has... Two evasion. So just a raw four or higher. One to three on four dice. No. One bite. And... Blind. Lose an eye. Suffer minus one permanent accuracy. This injury is permanent and can be recorded twice. Survive with two blind severe injuries. Suffers minus four permanent accuracy and retires at the end of the next showdown or settlement phase, having lost all sight. One bleak token. No damage, so there shouldn't be any after damage effect. Cool. Uh, Alright, let's grab blind. We're going. That broken ribs. All right. Was that the third card for the turn? We drew Screaming. We killed Andy. Oh yeah, we drew Screaming. Then Wild Carve killed Andy. Screaming got discarded because he died. And there's the third card for the turn. Bite. All right, Survivor's turn. <laughs> He's died of natural causes, yeah. All right. If I have the trap card, I'm gonna fucking lose it. We'll take Corpse's turn first. Question is, do we move into the blind spot and then attack? No, we... 
I'm the sun. On Bone Club. Hmm. <sighs> Damn it. We can move towards everyone else and then sunspot that. What are our chances of wounding with that? Oh, yeah, to our higher. For speed. Oh yeah, because we have minus one speed from Broken Rib. Okay, we could go here. They're all mad him. Yeah. The, the plus one survival from this is not good. Deadly isn't really going to come into play. Alright, seven or higher. Or speed. Ah, that means we'll probably draw the trap. God damn it. I mean, I'll be fine. And by probably, I mean like a one in five chance at best. One hit. That's not the trap. Cool. Uh, I'm a pig shoulder. Nothing special about it. Nothing bad happens if we fail. Okay. Anything but a one will wound? Alright. And then does the... Oh, yeah. Well, two tokens on Forbidden Light. Anything but a one... Sorry, anything, uh, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, we actually wound them. Thank fuck. This is bullshit. Our two remaining survivors do not have three plus courage. Nor are they deaf. Alright, Mapofu can block and move closer. Fuck, dude. <laughs> uh, and Phil cannot Berserker. He cannot use Fighting Arts because he's already frenzied. It's bullshit. I guess we'd rather have him use... Bandages and move closer? Maybe... Hit him in the shoulder with a dart. Uh, yeah, hard enough to go through. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a big fucking dart that explodes too. It's normal. Uh, activation limit three. Can use it two more times this showdown. So we want Phil to remove bleed tokens on I mean any hit to the head will probably kill him. <sighs> He'll remove him on himself. Mapo's blocking too. Alright, next turn. Oh yeah, one token on Embrace the Pain. Very cool. Yeah, damage bleed one. Very cool. Alright. He's get shuffled back. Mapo's still alive, so... Pig shoulder's still on top. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. If we get this out of the deck, then we can safely attack with the Dragon Slayer for fuck off huge damage. Infinite kick. Fuck you. 
Oh, no. Uh, we only have one evasion token on Mapo. Closest threat facing, otherwise closest threat. So we'll pick Mapo full. <laughs> so, he hits and then he draws a new AI card. There used to be, this used to be what Kick did, which now it just does draw, uh, perform basic action at the end. So what happened is if you had two infinite kicks, sorry, two regular kicks left in the deck, he would infinitely kick, and it'd be really funny. But yeah, now regular kicks, instead of drawing an AI card, they just do basic action, and there's infinite kick now, which is really funny. Alright. So, four speed, he'll hit on four or higher. And zoom into a Chuni. Which part? And we block two, we still take one hit. Cool, one bleed, priority target token, new AI card. Chan Li, oh. Am I going to win? I don't know. Body, arms, waist. Hmm. What do we take? I guess we take the hit to the arms? That's only three damage. Knock back five. Ready target token. He'll get run the fuck over. Oh, god damn it, that's really annoying. My dragon slay is doing jack shit. <laughs> Draws an AI card. And now he has two left after this. Double hack. Full threat facing. <laughs> Six speed. Cool. Alright. Ready target token gets removed. Uh, lower or higher. Two hits. Two bleed tokens. Legs and head. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. Bleed does not stack. Oh, fuck. That means he's gonna die to bleed tokens. God damn it. Call an evac helicopter. No. Next card. Hack City. God damn it. Okay, Mapo's dead. Unless all of these hits miss. Because of bleed one. Nope, Mappo's fucking dead. Cool. No matter how high we roll, gonna get got. Cool. Oh yeah, sorry. He doesn't have plus movement or anything like that. Plus one movement and plus one speed. Okay. That was super dead. Last AI card for the turn. Wild carve. Closest threat. Corpse. No way for Phil to stand back up. What does Menace do? Three brain damage. Okay. Cool. Ah. Uh. We no longer get to know what the top card of the AI deck is. 
his wisdom potion is survive is dead. Uh hmm. So five speed. Says two evasion or plus. <laughs> Damn it, that's five hits. <sighs> cool. <laughs> Welcome to the butcher. Level three. It's three each. One, two, three to the legs, three to the body, three to the head, oh, three to the arms, and another three to the arms, knock down, severe injury, what do we get? Dismembered arm or what? Bleeding. Two bleed tokens. And then, after damage, bleed one. And then another additional bleed token. Cool. Dead. <laughs> and Phil takes one. Oh, there goes Corpse. Maybe I should have brought a uh, green charm. That would be funny. Sorry, wrong dice. Phil takes one damage to the... Body. Cool. All right, survivor turn. Uh, Phil's knocked down. Next monster turn. Cool. Oh yeah. What does he get? Plus two damage tokens. There we go. Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> All right, he'll get. Uh, Bill will get back up at the end of the next monster turn. As long as he doesn't draw stupid lantern bullshit, we're good. You don't get to know what the top card is. I hope he draws screaming. We might be able to make it. Q. He's not a threat, because he's knocked down. So, Menace. Three brain damage. Oh yeah, I forgot to give everyone... 1d10. Like, 1d5. Insanity. That didn't matter. So he should have gotten two when he got frenzied. So he takes three. Oops. He gets... Two back. He gets another one speed, one strength. All right. Menace doesn't do anything else. No. Second card for the turn. You. Another menace. Uh. There's only one name on the list now. It's one insanity. Damn it. No. Don't worry, he's got four speed. Sorry, three speed. Or so he could. He's pretty close to being able to one shot. Uh, right, one more card for the monster's turn. Screaming. Cool. So he takes another three brain damage. What's his, uh, what's his brain trauma? <laughs> Come on, roll eight. Seven, nine, new perspective. Knockdown, 1d10 insanity. 
He's already knocked down. Got seven. And then he gets the 1d5 and the plus one speed and strength. So that's four. Oh yeah, Corp survived the longest, I think. And I think our oldest survivor at the moment is now... Miss Yakumo? It's a bit of a shame that Corp's... Uh, you know, pull the corpse. Uh... Well, shit happens. Alright. Bill gets back up. I think you have the right blessed heretic. Are you ready for the best roll of all time? That was Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> or the worst roll of all time. Let's see. Alright. Dragon Slayer. We won't be able to kill him this turn. Sorry, yeah, let me move into his blind spot. Okay. Five or higher. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yeah. There's no reason to attack him from facing. So we draw five AI uh, hit location cards. Are you dead? Yes. <laughs> uh, so is everyone else, about uh, like one second. No trap card. Ah, that's unless the death, lantern explosion, it's bullshit. Basic attack with headhunter. Ash. Oops, I almost moved that out of the way. Uh, we only have one survivor left, and he was knocked down for an entire round against the level 3 butch. Oh my god. Hold on, he was knocked down. It's reflex bash, that's fine. F. Then monster level brain damage and knockdown, so we want to end with that. Band braces, no. Reflex bash and knockback five. That's fine too. Oh no, if we attacked from the front, then we would have been able to just move out of the way. No, we want to be knocked down. Lantern Explosion is funny, so we'll go with that. How's Tabletop Darkest Dungeon? <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, I said good morning early, Renbot, alright? Good morning, JC Rouser. Good morning, Blue Draconem. <laughs> good morning, Blessed Heretic. <sighs> Seems like a whole lot of math. Uh, monster does five bleed tokens, you die. <laughs> I didn't kill Quartz. I definitely could have played that better. By putting Screaming like second from the top and then... Yeah, we could have played that better. Turns out Screaming is just the worst card to draw, ever. Oh, there was like an infinite kick in there too. I don't know. I don't know if we could have gotten that. That sucked. Alright, Furious Crown. The Butcher's invincible, by the way. That's a wound? Now, is this actually a wound? Oh, basic action will hit, even if he's knocked down. Okay. Seven. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. We deal two wounds. Alright. All survivors adjacent suffer bash, full move. And then the Furious Breastplate. Plus two toughness. I mean, we've got plus 14. We're good. Oh, yes. We didn't roll a 10. If you roll to wound, this location is a lantern 10. Your attack shatters one of the trophy lanterns hanging on the butcher's chest, causing a wailing explosion that sears your corneas. It's funny. We didn't get that. That's good. 
he does take damage. Good. He's fucking invincible. And Furious Bellow. So no matter what, we're going to get knocked down. That's good. That's a wound. Unless the Butcher says no. OMG, he said yes. All right, and we are neither death, death nor are we courageous. Brain damage equal to monster's level. Yeah. That's an additional plus one speed and uh, strength. Cool. We're gonna draw the trap, aren't we? And uh, oh yeah. 1D whatever insanity. 1D5. Cool. Get knocked down so the rest of these are cancelled. The monster. Oh yeah, and we get minus one strength token. Uh, I should have another counter on it. There we go. Cool. Alright, next turn. This should have like 20 counters on it. Oh, the monster performs basic action. So yeah. That's 2 plus. Cool. <laughs> we did uh, a lot of damage. So I only need to deal 3 wounds practically. And survive this. We only have one bleed token, that's nice. Uh, it's four, no, five. It's going. <clears throat> he'll hit on three or higher, and he'll deal three damage per hit. Five hits. We just need to survive. Two hits to the head? Fuck you. So we're gonna take a bleed token no matter what. Oh, the, damn it. That means we need to roll a 10 on one of these or die. Because we can take you know, three to the legs. And another three to the legs. Those are both the leg hits. We can take three to the waist. Cool. And then three to the head. Oops. Whatever. Three to the head twice. Head explosion. He's dead. <laughs> if we had one more turn, we... Probably could have killed the monster. At least we didn't lose the Dragon Slayer. Cool. Lose all resources in settlement storage. pretty close. This stream is making you sad. Ah, we can make a comeback. Come on. Good morning, Churlgum. Churlgum. Yeah, we get the one for death. We still have Pashyakumo, Izuki, Sandwich Enjoyer, Nagachino, Uthrek, and Ivory State. not that bad. Nah, not really. No, we lost us. We lost a lot of resources. 
The Butcher of Rampages through the settlement. Everyone escapes into the darkness until it leaves, but all resources in the settlement storage are lost, repairing the destruction. Cool. And that's level 3 Butcher for you. Okay. There we go. And one of those, one of those. <laughs> what a dick. Oh yeah, this he can mine earlier, you ghost. Am I insane? Probably. Uh, hmm. We have, uh, Yuzuki still has club proficiency. That's nice. God mornings. What? <laughs> they have those? Cool. Uh, timeline. Plant in year 24. Same cat. Oh yeah, settlement event. If I draw a murder, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Season of the Spiderling. Spiderlings are falling from the sky and into the settlement by the dozen. They lead through the air on silk parachutes, one at a time. Each player nominates a survivor and rolls on the table below based on their attributes. Repeat this until four survivors roll. And determine victory or failure. Minus two to all roll results of the settlement has the legless ball innovation. Cool. Uh... John Society. <sighs> hmm. Is anyone sane with three plus courage? Luthrek. Yuzuki is simply insane. Nyakumo is courageous as well. Hmm. Shit. <laughs> we have a good chance of losing way too many survivors from this. I'm thinking of who we have to nominate. Nominate. I guess we'll do Miss Yakumo. Because funny. Tabletop Sim says it's a nine. All right. A stunning display of bravery. The settlement achieves victory regardless of the other survivors' roll results. Okay. So sane survivors that aren't courageous have the best chances of uh, not getting anyone killed. And there's one. Ah, uh, do Nagachino. As a sane survivor? 
one to five, failure, skip the next hunt. Cool. He's not dead. So that's good. Uh, who's next? Oh yeah, same. I, hmm. Sandwich enjoyer? Failure. They're all dead. No, we're good. Yakumo rolled high enough that everyone succeeds. Uh, we need four survivors for the next hunt, though. <laughs> uh... Do we? Not really. Maybe we'll make it. Alright, Ivory State. Cool. Plus three survival? Yeah. That one survival for being named. There we go. And what do we get? Uh, if more than two survivors achieve victory, the settlement vanquishes the spiderlings. Now, that the settlement achieves victory regardless of the other survivors' roll results. Nominate survivors gain plus one permanent strength and one level of weapon proficiency if eligible. Cool. Uh... I think I'd have everyone on Fist and Tooth. Eh, whatever. I'll take the, the fucking... I'll take the L. What do we roll with? Nagachino. Every State and Sandwich Enjoyer. Cool. <laughs> well, no one died. We already have our next hunt party set up, though. Uh, cool. Oh yeah, and... Four survivors died. Thanks to cannibalism. I, I think you get the basic resources, like, now. It should be there. Like, once you get back to the settlement, not during the hunt itself. Or showdown. The baby song. Cool. We got a skull. Someone gets one insanity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shit. Hmm. -mm. May as well prepare for the next hunt. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, this is bullshit. It's great. Am I playing Redfall? N never. Why would I? That's that game, isn't it? Absent seizures, binge eating, monster panic. Nice. Intestinal prolapse. Oh, that's bad. It's really annoying. God damn it. No armor set. And we have a crystal skin survivor. <laughs> Alright. Uh. Yeah. 
Yoink. May as well move that stuff over there. Means we'll wear the boots too at this point. There go our Rawhide set bonuses for this year. Whoops. Pants. Alright. So, <laughs> Yuzuki. There we go. It does have club proficiency, that's cool. The story you tell later about how you played the shittiest game. I mean, I could just play Yeek. Uluthrek has crystal skin. Oh, so he can't wear any armor, but three armor for free to all locations. Miss Yakumo. Someone else gets the Dragon Slayer, I guess. Thunder Maul. Yeah, but it's got soul. <laughs> and then Ivory State gets to take the uh, Cycloid set. Here, we'll just have a Crystal Skin tank for whoever we're fighting. Be fun. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna lay adapt envy. I'm thinking about being a big coward. And we've gone the entire campaign <laughs> without getting a cat eye circlet, just because I haven't gotten lucky enough to draw a cat eye. But a level 3 white line will be easy. And we get to pick one resource from the deck. Eye Circle is like the best card in the game. <laughs> uh, hmm. Level 3 Gorm is gonna get me killed. Oh, yeah, the question is what do we farm? What makes the Cat Eye Circle good? Uh, you gotta look at the top three cards of the Hit Location deck. Uh, we have uh, the second best card. Some people would say it's better. Wisdom Potion. We get to play with the top card of the hit location deck revealed. <laughs> like doing an expedition for money. Yeah. Uh, so basically there's a there's a trap card in each monster's hit location deck. The Butcher is different because he shuffles his hit location deck every turn. Other monsters don't shuffle the hit location deck. So you will draw the trap card. Eventually. But with the cat eye circlet, if it's in the top three cards, you can put it on the bottom. You can get the hit you need, I mean, pretty much. It's mostly you like avoid negative reactions. Like as best as you can. Uh I mean I guess we could do a leyline walker at this point. No, we want someone with a rawhide headband for whatever monster we're fighting. Intestinal prolapse, god damn it. Uh hmm. 
We're going to need pickaxes. Speaking of farming, we really need mineral gathering. So the correct play, uh, like a month or two ago, would have been not to make the Dragon Slayer and instead make a, a beacon shield. And then we would have had two, maybe even three beacon shields by now. The difference between block one and block two is insane. Feel kind of bad still, like not having one. Speaking of farming, lucky charms are nice. We'll probably remove those. This crap lantern exists. No whisker harp. Hmm. This is John Tank. Scrap Lantern would be activated here. Hmm. -mm. I guess someone else could use some Spot Lantern. Surge without spending survival. We don't need two bandages. We do need a scavenger kit on someone. There we go. We need to do anything with these bones. Hmm. If we're lucky, I spent all these extra years mostly because I wanted to get Clan of Death to give newborn survivors plus one accuracy, strength, and evasion. I don't think we're gonna get it at this rate, I'll be honest. <laughs> Shit. Hmm. Uh... Clan will be dead, don't worry. I mean, we got four survivors. We don't need four survivors. We're probably gonna draw murder next year. Oh yeah, let me put this on the timeline as a treat. Oh yeah. There we go. Hmm. Where, uh, how many rerolls do we have? Luthrek, Ivory State, only two. It's not good. Hmm. Scrap sword. Ah. Uh. I really want to get a lantern set by the end of the campaign. But that requires one, two, three, four, five, six, seven iron. Fuck. Cool. Uh, we have enough lanterns for the rest of the game. I have to replace the pulse lantern if we get unlucky in a hunt event. But. Light spoilers, after we beat the Watcher, every survivor is required to take a lantern out. So, that's another space in the gear grid that gets used up. Good thing we've made good ones. Uh... Hmm. Everyone has a good weapon, right? Bone Club. Double Dash will help with that. Death is annoying. Intestinal prolapse is annoying. We can fix that at the... Uh... Shit, you fixed that at bloodletting, right? Do we not have that? God damn it. 
I mean, we could get that. That'd be fine. We haven't had anyone get warped pel pelvis, I don't think. And then we can remove the sorters with that. Uh, yeah. Bloodletting would be a fine innovation to get. That would help us a little bit. Hmm. God, I hate video games. <laughs> so we can fit one more piece of gear in Yakumo's grid. Something impressive that we could activate. I mean, we could put a pickaxe from someone else in the gear grid. We don't really need the green. This is a board game. Yeah, board, yeah. <laughs> no. And... Bandages? And someone? A lucky charm on... Oh yeah, lucky charm would be nice. Like that. It gets activated. Because all of these... Prismatic from the Cycloid Scale Armor set bonus. And these count as all colors, so these all connect. It's funny. I don't know if we're able to do this more efficiently. Hmm. Nah, probably not. That's probably the best we can get. Uh, and... Yeah, I guess we're good for the next lantern year. We didn't die. Like, the, the settlement isn't over yet. Hmm. That'd be funny if everyone dies during a hunt event somehow. Uh, yeah, do we have... Yeah, we haven't used Thundercaller yet. We could get a Steel Sword and Steel Shield if we're lucky. It's both, right? Yeah, finale is John Cyclops Knight. All survivors with less than three courage are struck dead. Uh... Yeah, maybe I don't want to draw that. Ah, uh, that'll only be Ivory State. That sucks. Hmm. Everyone gets one courage. Yeah, two to eight. Steel Sword is really good. Steel Shield is kind of funny. Uh. Let's see. Survive with the highest courage, gains Thunder Maul. It's unique, isn't it? Yeah. But if we roll high, we wouldn't get anything. Actually, no, Yuzuki would hit max courage. <laughs> He's almost. We could have. No, we can't have two Thunder Mauls. Fuck. God damn it. That's really annoying. Yeah. Yeah, Steel Sword, 5 Strength, Sharp, and on a perfect hit, gains 1d10 Strength for the rest of the attack. It's pretty nice. It's like, eh. It's got really good accuracy. Hmm. And Steel Shield is really interesting. So, minus three movement is horrible. So you, you're, you're rocking two movement. You're barely moving. But you can spend an action or one survival to ignore a hit. Without a limit. So you can just ignore hits as many times as you can during a turn. The, the, the shield is massive. So we could use that to try to, like, you know, not die. That could help us, yeah, like, as a, like, 
replacement beacon shield, like a discount one. That might work. That doesn't give you armor to locations, right? I forget. No. <laughs> it's kind of lame. Hmm. It does better damage than the beacon shield. That's cool. Well, we'll solve that later. Cool. Alright. Well, uh... Next, uh, next Monday. Fucking... Oh, wait, now we have six living survivors. I forgot. Two of them have to skip the next hunt. Okay. We're not that bad off. And they've got plus one strength, so that's nice. Maybe they'll get as much strength as corpse? I don't know. If we're lucky. Ugh. We didn't get a pass down the fucking... We didn't get a pass down the Piston Tooth Mastery. Man, I'm really excited to play Gambler's Chest. Oh, I already have that up. Alright. Philosophies are really cool. And a lot more interesting than... Like, the base game. But, like, you know... Campaign progression... A survivor can have much more impact on, like, the entire campaign by advancing knowledges. <laughs> like, compared to this, it's like, okay, cool. Rats was running, uh, Mask of Death and the uh, Monster Claw style, and then she died. Nothing happened. <laughs> No, nothing remains other than the resources that we got from uh, critting locations. It's a bit of a shame. The only thing that is like permanent is if you have family and you pass down weapon proficiency, or if you uh, if you get weapon mastery. Jimmy the Caver recreating this image. <laughs> oh, did he read Ted the Caver? It's a good bit. Well, anyways, time for the doodle segment. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and, I don't know, get some more coffee. I can't believe I misplayed. <laughs> uh, oh, would I rather- oh, shit. Get fucked. You shouldn't have pointed that out. <laughs> Would've taken months to notice. Anyways. I can't wait to get Mint Costella, and, uh, and then she draws Gormandism. <laughs> and then gets, like, a fucking second stomach. God, yeah, the philosophies has, have, like, fucked up, like, cool things. Like, there's just, uh, a knowledge where you just, you just get a survivor status card, second stomach. It's just, uh, it's just an extra slot in your gear grid that you can just put something in. <laughs> it's stupid. It's awesome. So you can, like, just carry a beacon shield outside of your gear grid. Doesn't have any affinity, so you don't have to worry about, like, losing out on anything, and you just get... It's just... It's just <laughs> like, that's the most normal one. Fuck, Gorman, these... <sighs> like, the, the tenant, or whatever. You just, like, eat stuff, and you get tokens. And then... Oh, is that the one where you can eat the tokens to get... No, 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 no. One of the ones is... One of the knowledge is... You can, like, consume tokens to get that attribute. So, like, if you have, like, a plus one strength token, you can just eat it to gain plus one permanent strength. It's fucking stupid in a cool way. Anyways. Oh, yeah, I actually did get it in. Damn it. Anyways, enough rambling and spreadsheeting and all that stuff. We shouldn't lose the next hunt. We'll take it easy with the level 3 white line, because yeah, I, I would love to fight Spidiculis. Level 2 should be possible. But we'll have someone, like, kidnapped, and that's not going to be good. <sighs> I hate video games. <laughs> and I hate... Right, I'll be right back. <laughs> 